Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four on the Evergreen server. I am Jade Cougar, and I want to welcome you back once again to a new episode. I hope you're all healthy, happy, and uh, yeah, generally just doing well in life at the moment. Thank you so much for joining today. I am hiding here for a reason because I do have something a little bit exciting and new to reveal to you today. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> there, there went the climax. <laughs> climax, And it certainly doesn't help that there's still that cow head up there. Uh, but yeah, I built a new portal, and that is super exciting, I must say. Um, oops, if we take a look at it real in the right way, Jade, seriously. Okay. So I took this particular design. I did this off camera. I got this from a Minecraft forum post by Nemrod, and I've adapted a design that he has made here to my own needs. His is significantly larger, if I'm not mistaken. I've adapted the design, and again, this is only kind of like a base design at the moment, a very basic uh, framework to work with, very similar to my house over there. I still have yet to add some details to that because I've been doing a whole bunch of resource gathering and idea um, gathering since then working on this portal as well. And the reason I wanted to move that portal from over there, which is where the starter portal was, is that this whole area here needs to be terraformed and done properly now. Because as you recall in previous episodes, when we did the bridge, I shortly after that did some markings all over the place. And the netherrack markings here roughly put a, like, a, a kind of uh, a shape in place of where pathways or roads are going to be going. And obviously because the mine is quite important, it's a central point to be able to get resources from, there's going to be a pathway coming to and from it that's going to be going all the way to the farming area and the far off fields over there. But one thing that I noticed over the last couple of days is that this area is really, really flat. And while you can make buildings that look really, really interesting, the terrain also has to be interesting. So what I've been doing off camera, and I happen to record a little bit of it, hopefully I can put together a nice time lapse for y'all, is a new terraforming project. I'm currently standing on a hill that was not here at all. It was completely flat ground before. And the reason I want to be able to do it, it's not all done either. See, my horse is still checking it out. He's all confused. Uh, what's all this? <laughs> anyway, um, the idea with this is to try to just make the, the land area a little bit more interesting and I previously marked these out with some uh, wool blocks here, just to kind of give a general guide as to where this terrain is going to go. And what I'm wanting to do is build at least one building up here, possibly two, but certainly stables, which is very convenient that the horse is there. He's kind of waiting for his place to go. Um, but yeah, it's probably going to be up maybe one or two levels still, depending how much dirt we have available to us still. But the idea here is to be able to have multiple pathways where one main pathway is going through here to the farm district and this pathway is going to be going under what would be like an overpass or a bridge a walkway that comes from the central area where the portal is where my main starter home is and where this new building is that i'll talk about in a moment so this area is going to be used a fair bit by me uh, as, we, as we go forward obviously so we really want to make it function well but also look good and we're going to be having some pathways going this way and here's the path the 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 intersecting path pathway that's going to be going to the to the farming district but what we're actually wanting to do here is make a walkway that goes over it and connects up here on this hilly new terraformed area here and this area is going to then contain at least the stables, perhaps something else. I'm not entirely sure just yet. We'll see how large I end up making the stables because there's a lot of horses here. Uh, there's, well, there's one here. Uh, there's a couple down there in, in that hole, but there's quite many off in the distance. There's very large areas of plains here. So there's a lot of horses to be able to capture and bring over here. And I thought that might be a really nice addition to have some stables here just to be able to look at and occasionally use the horses. They're quite convenient to travel around um, but the, the so-called conventional way if you don't use your elytra or whatever. So this is what I've been working on, on cam off the camera. 
And uh, I'm really, really excited about this particular episode because we're really starting to see some, some of this area take shape. As you can see, I've had to move all of my animals, my basic old school farmland that was originally over there in the back by the cocoa beans over there. Uh, I moved them all over here. It's not quite in the farming district yet. And I've made things very, very ugly. Like it's, it's nothing fancy. It's just old school stuff. Um, because that whole area is up. That, that that's going to be quite many episodes what we're going to be doing with that area it's going to be absolutely fantastic i've got some really neat ideas to be able to make it not only function well but look good too i'm really excited about that but equally i'm also pretty excited about this episode because not only are we going to finish this terraforming task at least f for the most part but i think what we're going to do is focus on this building here and as you may probably guess because of its shape um, this is going to be my main storage building and this storage building is going to be rather big. Um, inside is going to be, uh, well, we'll see when we build it, how big, just how big it is, but it is, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 wide. And I believe this is uh, 19 long, if I'm not mistaken, it could be a, it could be a bit wrong. I can't remember the exact, uh, dimensions and you probably not want to hear me count, but this is a very large, uh, storage building. And the reason why I've already started it is because something that I've needed to get going here is a super smelter. And as you can see here, I've got your basic conventional furnace units here on the one side and then the blast furnace furnaces, pardon me, for all of the ores on the other side. And this is based on cub fan, cub fans design, where you have your inputs here, you put your fuel up here, you put your stuff that you want to have smelted into the here, you just pull the lever, light goes on, everything goes on its own. And once it's done, you either can go here and collect it yourself and collect the XP that comes with it. Or then you can make it fully automated like it is uh, when I flip the switch. So when the flips, excuse me, when the switch goes up, it goes to automatic mode. When this uh, switch is down like it is currently, it's manual XP mode. I go there and collect it myself. Um, but I'm going to be using mostly the auto, obviously. Uh, and, and what that's going to do is bring all of the outputs to this particular chest. The light will turn on when there's stuff that enters the chest, just like right now. Light goes on to indicate that there's stuff in there to come and collect. So we've got this on both sides here, and I wanted to build this ready right away in the beginning because this is this is the basement, this is the cellar level of the of the um, uh, storage area, and I wanted to do that because eventually I want to be able to automate some of the the uh, the process as well, whether or not I just come down here and get this material myself manually, or then I will put a, a system down below it so that it automatically takes what goes into this chest and moves it automatically upstairs to the eventual storage area. So I'm really, really excited about this building, and this is quite important to get right, which is why I wanted to start a little bit off camera. So you can see, I'll try to stand here in the middle, and you can see this is going to be a pretty sizable um, storage area. And it, on one hand, you know, it's not one of those super, super mega awesome uh, storage area of doom kind of thing. But for me, as a, as a lone player in this area, this is going to be plenty of room to put a lot of different chests and thus all of the different resources. When this is able to be somewhat in good shape, I'm able to get rid of all of that mess over there and all of that mess behind it over there and be able to move those things into the proper area. Once we have the storage building actually up and running, we're really rocking with all of the projects that we have after that. So this is really a major, major bottleneck for me. I need to sleep here soon. Come on. Oh, isn't that pretty? Minecraft sun. All right, let's try. Yes. All right, here we go. So this is obviously very central to get done right now, this whole storage area. Very, very important because once all of that stuff gets moved over here, the the ability to be able to to not only gather resources, but also organize resources, which has been now a major pain in the backside for me. 
now that I've got shulker boxes in use, which is actually fantastic. Not only do I have some uh, limited space over there with the, with the chests, but they're all disorganized right now. And I hate that it's taking more and more time to try to find where was that piece of wood or where was that die or whatever. So I, I really need to get organized here. This particular project is probably the most important central project that I will do in this season on the Evergreen server because it is after this that things actually can get going properly. I'm not going to be doing any fancy uh, uh, redstone based auto sorting system probably because it just takes up too much space otherwise I would have had to make it wider but I will probably use some kind of multi -sort sorting system that will help me to be able to to become more organized. Once that occurs, we can then finally terraform this whole area properly. And then, oh, uh -huh, that's nice. And then start working on beautifying this area and making it more functional with the different pathways and then the bridges. So I'm going to have obviously a couple bridges here. We have one that, that's going to be going over here. We have another that's going to be going across to the farmland. So we've got at least a couple of bridges to be able to build, plus the stables, plus some terraforming. There's an absolute load of work here. And I also plan to be, obviously, detailing these buildings, including this beautiful house here uh, and this portal. There's just so much to be able to do. And this episode just is the tip of the iceberg. And that's why I'm super excited to be able to share it with you today. So I think what we're going to do is stop talking. We're going to get started with this terraforming project. And I'll continue that until the end. And hopefully there's a nice time lapse for you to do to enjoy as a bit of a warm up for the rest of the episode where we can focus on getting this bad boy done over here. I'm super excited to be able to do this and to be able to show this to you today. I'm so happy that you're here. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get started, shall we? All right, we're back here. We're going to get started on this lovely, lovely new building. At least I hope it will be lovely afterwards. So this is the uh, main storage area. And we're just going to <coughs> drop down a couple of these, these shulkers already ready. And the palette is going to be pretty dark, I do admit. But let's see, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. It's pretty high, but I want it to be a pretty big hall. So, well, bigger than a house, storage hall, it will eventually be bigger or about the size of that. So we'll go with that. Here we go. Oof, that's seven. So we're going to just quickly put these up. Two, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And back down again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just going to get the frame in place here, just so we can see what we're working with. So what I'm working with here, you see stripped uh, spruce logs, and I've got spruce logs that are going up now. I'll strip them in a moment. Two, three, four. There we go. All right, so we've got our basic shape right now. I'll probably add another one in here, if I'm not going to add any window. We'll see, because we've got to think about entering, entering this place too, so... As I said, we've got a pretty dark 
palette, at least for the walls. So what I'm looking for here, I'm just going to move this shulker box, get out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to be using brown terracotta. It is a really nice texture to work with. Oops, made it a little bit too high already. I'll just go too high here. And I'll take, show you what one wall section will look like. It is really, really nice. I almost did this with the house over there, but for the house, it just seemed to be a bit dark. This one, I know it will be dark, but what I'm going to be doing as an opposite is instead of having a dark roof like I did on the house, on this particular building, I'll probably have a lighter colored roof, which should hopefully offset the the uh, darkness factor of <laughs> of the um, of the walls here. So let's uh, let's keep going. I'm gonna just keep running through with this one. We'll do a little bit of a test here, so you can see visually how this is gonna look. All right, here we are. This is it. I've been working for quite a few hours now, and finally came up with a color code that I really liked, or color palette that I really liked, and here it is. Yeah, boy. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> whatever. I went with green. I went with green. This is something that's a little bit different than I originally planned for. I was going to go with granite at first, but I decided that was a little bit too one-dimensional. I was playing around on the creative world for a little while, and uh, I found this color combination of green terracotta, which has a bit of a texture on its own, plus green, uh, a green wool. And the combination of both really, really makes a very interesting looking roof. I'm very, very pleased with this. I don't know what you guys think about it. I'd love to hear about it. It's okay if you're not, if it's not really your style, it's okay. But uh, I would like to take you for a small little bit of a tour inside of this. I did manage to do a fair bit inside as well. And this is my storage area. And the first thing many of you will probably see is that, well, where's the auto sorting jade? Well, that's very true. I don't have any auto sorting. That is something that I tried to work with initially to see what I can do to make things a little bit more automated and easier and came up with a little bit of a design for a water um, a system that went all water flow system that went all the way around to be able to help with that. But every single design that I found ended up coming with uh, very big consequences and the consequence of course is space and there's a reason obviously that storage uh, systems tend to be in a, in a more square um, shape if you will obviously we could still do something with rectangle but it would have to be much wider than this every single auto sorting system seems to come out almost five or more blocks from the wall on each side and that would give me basically about two to three blocks to work with and in such a huge building to have three blocks to be able to move around and find all of your stuff just for the sake of having things auto sorted when that in and of itself wasn't the original problem it just seemed too much of a sacrifice to make so i went back to square one and said what is my main problem well my main problem is that huge stack of chests over there. I've got a whole bunch of stuff in every one of them. They're all mixed and matched with everywhere. Mi mi well, they're all mixed up basically. Plus I've got some shulker boxes in there that has a whole bunch of bits and bobs too. All of this is just disorganized and I have run out of room. That is the main issue. It's organization. It's not the autom uh, automating of the whole process. So this was the conscious choice that I made. I ended up doing so that I kept the space that I needed to be able to fill with chests that I wanted. And I, yes, I did it this way so that it's easier to access the chests, be able to see rather than putting them the other way where you only see the end of the chest. Yes, I could fit more that way, but this looks nicer. I believe this will probably be enough to fit most of my stuff. And if not, there's always an opportunity to expand upwards. And then I've got a whole other floor here of probably, well, I, if I really wanted to push it, I could, no, I don't think I could do three, obviously, but probably two at least. And that could go all the way around if I wanted it to as well. Upstairs also causes another bit of an issue. I have some things to solve with this. How do I get up here? 
<laughs> currently it's only using scaffolding. That's not the best or nicest looking system. So I'll probably install some water elevators one way or another in one of the corners. And uh, that, that will have an effect, of course, on a couple of the, the chests. I also put here a maintenance tunnel into the shelter area. Excuse me, the smelter area. I should probably speak English a bit more. <laughs> I live in Finland long enough, you'd get things all mixed up. All right, then back up here. This is the maintenance area. And as you can see from the other side, I've also put a very simple stairway system to get into the smelter itself without having to go outside. So very simple system, nothing fancy, but it doesn't need to be. It's functional. It looks good here enough for me and my needs. Now on the outside, on the other hand, I have already started to detail out the roof with the two textures. I've got more to do obviously with the walls and that will happen probably off camera. So next episode, we should be seeing more details here more details with the house, which I haven't really touched since then. And then of course the portals, we've got three brand new builds here that are going to have a lot of detail next time we start the next episode. All right. Then lastly, of course, I'm really proud of what we did here with the, uh, with the landscaping by adding this huge mound here. And this is all ready to go for the next builds when I go over here, which is not a high priority at the moment, to be fair. I just wanted to get the landscaping set up so that I could start working on the roads and then getting rid of this uh, unnecessary mound here and getting that all set up as well. What we're going to focus on next episode more than likely is over there, the farming area, because now I'm starting to run low again on certain resources that I need and want to be able to make nice builds. In order to do that, we need to have farms. Right now, we don't have more than those for farms. Pretty pitiful. So we're going to change that next time. I want to thank you so much for joining today. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please consider liking and subscribing. Share ahead, please. I'd love to be able to have more subscribers join. And uh, please leave a comment if you'd like. I'd love to be able to hear from you to see how you, what you think of the build so far. Thank you for joining once again. Stay happy, stay healthy. We'll see you next time. Bye.